Let my people go. The Lord of hosts will do battle for us. Hello, brothers and sisters. Today is December the 19th. I have a few visions and a few dreams to share with you. The first one was a very vivid experience to where I believe I was actually there participating in the throwing down of Lucifer. And I'll kind of paint the scene for you guys. I'm there and I'm in front of Lucifer as she's falling to the earth um, or through the heavens and I hear the Savior off to my, my side I don't see him in this particular vision, but I hear him. And Lucifer, you know, he had white long hair. Sometimes I see him with blonde hair, but sometimes he has white hair. In this particular vision, he had white hair, kind of long, kind of wavy, as if he just got in a fight. His eyes were bloodshot red, as if he was just really mad and it's evil, you know. And he had white wings and, you know, was an attractive angel. And he was kind of on his back and I could see like the wind or whatever kind of moving through his wings and like he's just being thrown down. And behind him, it's as if I'm in a whole nother realm. And I believe they call them realms. And I see like 
would look like these heavenly buildings, but they look as if they were war torn, you know, like as if there was just fighting going on there. And that might be why the Lord says he makes the earth and the heavens pass away and he makes new heavens and new earth. You know what I mean? Because, you know, those, those heavens have a lot of damage as well. Um, at least the, the, fallen, um, the fallen heavens. And so, now I'm, I'm hearing Lucifer and I'm watching him getting thrown down and I hear him try to make this last, last ditch effort to lie to the Lord, to stop his falling down. I hear him say something like, okay, okay, I'll join the church, I'll join the church. You know, with his red bloodshot eyes kind of lying, he is the great deceiver. And so all of a sudden, I don't see the Lord, but I hear him as we're throwing him down to the earth. Or at least I'm getting to, to watch this from like right next to him, watching it all take place. And the Lord is just right out of my reach. And I hear the uh, Lord say, oh, so you, you want to join the church? Do you know that you would have to give your life for them? Are you willing to give your life for them? And he said it like in this way where he was kind of mocking them. But it's really authoritative, powerful, but yet loving, but mocking, you know, um, words he was telling him. He knew that Lucifer wasn't really trying to change his ways. But so, so God was just like, all right, you want to join him? Like, do you realize you'd have to give your life? I don't know why he said that. But he says, oh, you realize you have to give your life for them? Are you willing to give your life for them? Full knowing that Lucifer would never do that for any of us, you know. Lucifer was just trying to get out of this bad situation. And Lucifer kind of like with his red eyes was like, you know, heck no kind of attitude, you know. Just prideful to the very last minute, you know what I mean? He's just, and so, and so, yeah. So I watched him get thrown out. And, and brothers and sisters, we're going, we're like at the very last moments here before we're taken up. And I'm really worried about some of our brothers and sisters who, um, who are not quite where they need to be yet, who, who think they are. And it's really starting to bother me. My spirit has been groaning really hard for the last two weeks. And so I'm gonna start talking more about these things at the end of videos. You know, whatever I, whatever I feel that the Lord is talking to me about that's really bothering me that I see happening in the body of Christ, I'm gonna start to, to be more blunt about it because think about this, when the two, the two witnesses come, are they gonna sugarcoat things? No, right? They're gonna tell you exactly what the Lord wants them to say because they don't fear man, only the Lord. Fear the one who could pick your spirit in hell. Don't fear a man, because man has no say so, no authority over your life. Only God does. Now the next vision, um, I'm sitting, well I'm there, and I see some male warriors. Now in this particular vision, if you can imagine, you see a male warrior sleeping, and I'm facing towards his eyes. So all of a sudden he awakens and boom, his eyes open. The scene changes, another male warrior is laying there. Boom, his eyes open. He's awakening. Another male warrior, you know, different hair, different clothes, it's, it's, it's there sleeping. Boom, his eyes open. He's awakened. I'm in my bed sleeping. Boom, I come out of the vision, my eyes awaken. That was pretty amazing. You see what the vision was doing there? It was showing um, warriors of God awakening and have these warriors, me watching them awake, you know, to their, their life's mission. And then God had me do it in sequence as well, had me open my eyes. So I thought that was a very exciting vision that the Lord allowed me to partake in. For those of you who like to uh, research the songs that the Lord gives us every now and then, um, if you want to write these down, I, the Lord always plays these songs for me. and He, he does it in such a way to... You know, at the very moments when you're kind of down, you're in bed two, three, or four o'clock in the morning praying and pondering, and maybe you're feeling lonely, he always he's comes through for me, and he and he shows me he loves me, and he what he'll do is he'll he'll have a song playing for me in my spirit, and you know I'm not the kind of person I don't I don't listen to the radio. The only Christian songs or songs I'll listen to are Christian songs, and I don't hardly listen to music at all, you know. But and there are songs that if I heard a word or two, I gotta go look them up online. You know, is that the song what I, I think it is? Cause my mom, you know, kind of, you know, of course is older than me and she listens to a genre of music that's kind of out of my time frame. you know? So like if I hear a few words sung to me, I'm like, wait a minute, is that the kind of song that my mom used to listen to? And so I'll go look it up and he'll use those songs because he knows in my heart, I'm, I'm not gonna think, well, maybe it's a coincidence cause, cause he's gonna know that, you know, I don't listen to that music. So if I'm hearing uh, an old, 60s or 70s song playing in my spirit it's not going to be because you know i'm just singing the tune in my head it's going to be because he's giving it to me 
and the three songs he's given me since the last time I've shared a few songs with you. Um, it's a song by Chicago. Maybe it means something to Chicago. You're the inspiration. I've also heard Everything I Do, I Do It For You by Brian Adams. And, uh, and I also heard a song by Rio Speedwagon. It's called I Can't Fight This Feeling Anymore. And I think these are songs the Lord is playing for his bride, brothers and sisters, because he loves us so very much. The next flash dream I had was one of seeing Jacob's ladder. Again, for those of you who don't know, the Lord calls me Jacob. And I'm watching this ladder and I'm seeing the number 23 that I'm feeling in some way represents me in this particular vision or dream. Now I'm seeing Jacob's ladder and I'm seeing like above the very top rack, kind of like clouds representing the heaven or the gates of heaven or something like that. And then I'm seeing anywhere from seven to 12 steps on this ladder. I don't know if there were seven or 12, but I'm guessing they're in between that, you know, seven to 12. And then on the very top, if I'm looking at the ladder on the very top rack to the right, I'm seeing the number 23 taking up the right side of that very top ladder. And it had as, as if it had like a star kind of light around that number 23. And I knew somehow that number represented me and was on the top right of that top ladder. And that was pretty much it for that short vision. But when I went to, um, you know, thinking and pondering what exactly does this mean, Lord, and all this, I, I, I'm not sure, but I came up to Haggai chapter 2, verse 23, where it talks about being made a signet, which I believe means being given authority. And also, it also talks about being chosen. I won't go any deeper into that. I'll just continue on to get some more of these flash streams in. Um, now, this, this was a personal one I had heard. I heard, war in the heavens that I inherit. So this is not the first time that I'm hearing in, in dreams and visions that I'm actually inheriting something to do with the war that's taking place in the heavens as of right now. The next dream I'm going to share is I was actually, it looked to be Israel, but, you know, I think it was how the enemy plans to make Israel. Um, if you guys go and you watch some of these videos online, there are actually Google Maps, I believe it is. Google has um, images of how they want the new, um, the new temple to look like. And they also have the mosque uh, planned to be built there, like next to the temple. And this is exactly what I saw. I was taken to it looked like a temple. And I'm looking outside and I'm, and I'm walking down these streets, right? And I'm like, all these Muslims are, are trying to like fight me. And I'm kind of just dodging them and moving my body. I'm not trying to hurt them. I'm kind of moving side to side and, and dodging their hits and walking around. And, and throughout these scenes, I have like a temple security trying to hold me down and all this stuff. And, and I walk out this building and I look out because they want me to go see what I see out front. And as I look out front, I see a beautiful building, but I look at it and I notice it's like this white temple looking thing. And I look at it and look to the top left and I see a symbol and it's a symbol of Islam. I was like, oh, no. I said, I got to get out of here. And then the guy was like, why? I said, that's a mosque. I said, this is supposed to be the temple site. I said, that's, this is evil. You know, I want to get out of this situation. So, and they said, okay, follow us. And so as I followed them, they take me to a building next to it. Now the flooring, everybody, the walls of all these buildings look white and beautiful. But this place is, as it was, I knew it was evil. As I went to this building next to it, I noticed that they had rebuilt the temple. Or at least in this, this dream they had rebuilt it. I'm not sure. I can't give you much more information about this dream except that when I walked into the temple next to it, I looked at this entrance into this temple and I saw glowing beings all up in this temple. Now, I could be wrong, but I, I figure this is what the enemy has in store um, until, you know, until it's all destroyed, you know, and God makes everything new. Like, you know, I, I, I think I was shown their plans uh, per se in it. I just felt it was interesting because if you go on the, I believe Google Maps or uh, Google something, you can actually see their plans. And it's pretty, pretty much almost exact what I saw. So if it's any, any indication of what I saw, then it's actually, these plans are going to go through. Or at least like just for a short season, you know, while the Antichrist is doing his thing um, before he gets thrown into the lake of fire, if you know what I mean. But, but I saw what I think would be an, a temporary setting of how they're going to set things up. Uh, before it's all cast down. As I'm looking at my paperwork here, I have two more dreams to share, but I'm gonna save this other one because it's really long for another video. And I'll just share this last experience I, I've had with you guys. Um, now, I'm in this classroom and the people in this classroom are all chosen to sing a song. And they all sung their songs and it was my turn to sing. 
and I was singing last. And as I went to sing, I, f I felt myself walking in, in this, this like mall. As I start to sing, I start to, a bunch of little kids start to mock me and to, to scoff at me and they start to giggle at me and they start to, you know, I had to make a choice. It was kind of like a trial of my faith. Do I keep singing or do I let them stop me? So I kept, you know, I kept going through it and I kept singing and I kept ignoring their mocking. And so, and we walked, all walked into these classrooms. And as we're walking into this classroom, I feel as if uh, my spirit was rescued from this event, all of a sudden, boom, I'm taken, and I'm in this car, this truck, with about four or five other angels. Now, these angels were in there, and I'm like, I was like, the first thing I said to them, I said, those kids that were all around me, mocking me, teasing me, though, that wasn't a natural event. Those weren't real kids, were they? And these angels shook their head like, no, no, they weren't. You know, when they said that, I knew that those kids were just Satan. It was Satan mocking me, trying to stop me from singing my song as he, as he does to many of us. I even asked them, you know, who was that? You know, and I knew who it was, but they didn't even want to say the name. They're just like, no, let's just get out of here, you know, and they were leaving the situation. I felt as if in that particular event, it was, um, it was a rescue event. Now, could that also be symbolic of us being rescued from this earth right now? It sure could be. We're all singing our songs, you know, we're all headed to this other place, or a lot of us are. And, you know, the enemy's trying to stop us from singing our songs. He's trying to stop us from singing that new song, brothers and sisters. And, and God, again, with his angels, comes to our rescue. And it was a pretty symbolic dream, but it was one that showed me that God is always there for us and he is there to rescue us during all these hard times. Brothers and sisters, as I mentioned in the front of this video, when the two witnesses come, they're not going to sugarcoat anything. They're going to speak truth, the words of God, because they don't fear man. They only fear the one who can pit their soul in hell, and that is the Lord God Almighty. And so we all need to really stop sugarcoating things at this last moment, and I will speak truth to you. And I pray with all my heart that you do not get offended by any of the words I say, but you take it to the Lord, because I am only trying to be obedient to God. But I testify to you that these things are from God. If you turn your scriptures to Revelation 2, we read, And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest, suffereth that Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and, sed and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent for her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into the great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. When we are okay, with the Jezebel spirit leading the church of God. And we are okay with letting the Jezebel spirit teach and to direct the church as a whole online. Then you are not of the church of Philadelphia, but you are of the church of Thyatira. Think about this, brothers and sisters. To commit fornication does not necessarily have anything to do with sex. Spiritual fornication is allowing the Jezebel spirit to do things like teach the church to instruct the church, the body of Christ as a whole, to usurp authority over man. Brothers and sisters, when the Lord talks about the head covering of a woman, he's talking about the covering of the woman is the man, and the covering of the man is Christ. The Lord is saying that you have to have your covering. It's kind of like, for example, when the Lord said that Lucifer was the covering angel, he was the angel in charge or the angel over the other angels. So when God says that man is the covering of the woman, man is over the woman to, to cover her, to guide her, to protect her. And when this is not done, and the prophetess or so-called uh, leader goes and self-appoints herself positions of authority, brothers and sisters, she has no covering. She is operating um, against the word of God, therefore rebelling against the scriptures. And when the brothers allow it to take place and they are um, joining themselves with the church of Thyatira by letting 
by letting this take place, by letting Jezebel teach, by letting uh, self-proclaimed prophetesses teach the, the gospel, and when, them, when they themselves are remaining silent and, and, and not standing up against these type of things, they are participating and joining themselves with the church of Thyatira. I know that's to you these days in these last days, that must, must sound extreme to you, brothers and sisters, but who are some of the most righteous women that ever lived in this earth? Mary, uh, Sarah, could you imagine Sarah? Sarah was so obedient to God that not only whenever Abraham was talking to the angels, she was not even in the room. She had total respect and reverence as it was Hebrew custom in those days, brothers and sisters, that whenever the men were, were in conversation, that the women would not even be in the room that the men were in discussing the gospel. That's how much respect they had. And Sarah was so obedient to God that she even called her husband Lord. Now, could you imagine the sisters you sisters of our day having so much respect for your husband and submissiveness to your husband and so much respect for Christ because when you show your submissiveness, submissiveness to your husband you are only showing it to Christ and you are showing Christ that you are obedient to him not your husband now could you imagine that taking place in our day and sisters we want our sisters to be the most righteous sisters to ever walk this earth and if they did it of old but yet we are too prideful to do it now brothers and sisters and where does that leave you where does that leave you passing your tests now since I'm running kind of low on time I'm going to talk about a few more things as quick as possible the next thing is we're going to read is in Matthew 7 13 to 14 and it states enter ye at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it Brothers and sisters, the teaching that all will be raptured is, is not true. Please uh, know that very few will make it. And if this scares you, then I'm sorry. But it is the truth. Few there be that make it to heaven. The next thing I'd like to talk to you guys about is a common misconception. Um, on the, you know, online, we have a lot of our brothers and sisters who like to do the spiritual uh, war prayers. And I want to talk to you about a few things. The first thing I want to talk to you about is this that when you say a prayer and you get up in the morning and you're like, Lord, you know, I put on, um, you know, the girdle of, of truth and I put on the, the feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace and you're putting like all these, the shield on, the sword and you're doing all this. Brothers and sisters, I, I want you to understand something. When you say that prayer, you're not like putting some invisible costume on. When you stand in truth, you are putting on the breastplate of righteousness. When you are living a life of peace you're having your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace you are living these things it's a lifestyle it's not just going and saying a prayer and you're like just like rubbing your leg your hand over your leg and you got this protection on and this on that on when you live in faith you're pitting that on when you live in righteousness you're automatically gonna have these things girdled upon you you, you know what I'm trying to say it's, it's a lifestyle it's not like I want you to be mature in the gospel, brothers and sisters. It's not a, a prayer that puts it on in the morning when you wake up, like going and eat your, you know, eating your protein shake. No, it's it's a lifestyle that the Lord is talking about. It's not just a prayer, it's a lifestyle. Also, if we turn to Matthew 6, 5 through 8, we read, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Father which is in secret. And the Father which, is, which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they shall be heard of much for their speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. What does it mean to say a set prayer or to have vain repetitions? Okay, a set prayer is a pre-written prayer. Now, whenever the Lord Jesus Christ was on the earth, the apostles and the, his disciples asked, how do we pray, Lord? And he gave them the Lord's prayer. You know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, he gave them the Lord's prayer, but he didn't say, say this prayer over and over. He said, I'm going to show you how to pray. And so that's what he did. He gave us the way or a method to, to pray. So if I were to go right now and write you a war prayer that I make up, 
and I start to repeat this prayers over to you and have you repeating the prayer that I made, that is a set prayer. What is a, what is a vain prayer? A vain repetitious prayer. A vain repetitious prayer is to repeat a prayer over and over. So whenever you guys are up and you're doing your, your, your war prayers, make sure that your prayers come from the heart. Pray to him as you're talking to a loving father. Don't come against evil with vain repetitious prayers and set prayers because the Bible is against that. What good are you doing um, going against the enemy by going against the scriptures in itself? So when you go up against the enemy, you speak from the heart. You pray and then you address the Father and you thank him for things. You ask him for things. You talk to him as though you are talking to a father because you are indeed talking to the Father of all spirits. And so I'm telling you now not to use set prayers, not to make them vain and repetitious and not to go and make this all about your, your vein and your set repetitious prayers, brothers and sisters, because then you are just doing it to be seen of men. Look how great my prayer is I wrote. Let me say it and let this catch on and let's all say the same prayer when the scriptures are clear. Are we here to follow some of the scriptures or are we the obedient children set forth in this last day to do all that is set forth by God the Father and Christ. We are here to do all, right? We are here to reach that next step of obedience, to get that latter reign of faith. And so when the Lord says, do not use vain repetitious prayers, then don't do it. If he says, don't write prayers and make set prayers, then don't do it. If he says, do it, pray in this way, then that's great. And I understand that some of you will say, well, I like to say the Lord's Prayer. Well, I look at the Lord's Prayer scripture and you can never go wrong by repeating scripture. You know, if it's the longest scripture you know and you're, trying to re and you're trying to quote scripture, then I don't see a problem with that. But when you start to make squares and to repeat, make prayers and to repeat them, then you're actually participating in, in making, creating vain and repetitious prayers. And you're actually being, just doing it to be seen of men. And I know some of you are isolating yourselves. You are isolating yourself from all your brothers and sisters. You unsubscribe from everybody. You pitch your videos out to tell them things. And every, every one of your sisters is bad. They're all evil. They're all bad. But brothers and sisters, this spirit of isolation is not from God. The spirit of isolation is from Satan. He wants you to be isolated from everybody. Because if I were to go, brother so-and-so, your brother, this is not right. You know, if he, if you get rid of me and you get rid of me out of your way, then the, the enemy knows I can't go to you and tell you that. And so if you unsubscribe from everybody and you isolate yourself, the, Satan knows that nobody can go to you and say, look, brother, uh, the, you know, the Lord's, the Lord's telling you this is not right. He's getting you out of the way. So if you find yourself being isolated from the body of Christ, then what good is it to be a Christian? God said, if you love me, feed my sheep. If you love me, keep my commandments. So therefore, you're not feeding his sheep. All you're doing is separating yourself from his sheep. You know, we are to be in the world, but not of the world. He didn't say to isolate yourself from the body of Christ. So brothers and sisters, if you are doing these things, I humbly pray that you would change your ways, humble yourself before God, and that we all may find ourselves worthy to make the rapture brothers and sisters because straight is the way and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life and few there be that find it and i say these things in the name of jesus christ amen <laughs>